Thank you, Chairman. Um, Director Burns, U.S. law states that to be designated as a foreign terrorist organization, a group must be engaged in premeditated, politically motivated violence against non-combatant targets, and the activity must threaten the national security of the United States. In my view, and in the view of a number of folks, the Wagner Group fits that definition. Wagner now openly operates as private military for Vladimir Putin, conducting terrorist operations in Ukraine and in countries across Africa. Uh, Director, I realize that the responsibility for designating foreign terrorist organizations lies with the Secretary of State, but I'd like to get your assessment of the Wagner Group's activities, whether you would describe the atrocities its mercenaries have committed as terrorism, and if you think there is any downside to making such a designation. Well, thanks, Senator. And, you know, as you rightly pointed out, I'll steer away from the policy question there. But certainly our assessment is that the Wagner Group is a vicious, aggressive um, organization uh, which has posed a threat not just to the people of Ukraine. And we see that every day, especially in the intense fighting that's gone around the city of Bakhmut right now, largely conducted on the Russian side by the Wagner Group, which is suffering incredible casualties. But I've also seen it, as we were discussing earlier in my own travels in West Africa and in the Sahel, where I think the um, deeply destabilizing impact of Wagner can be seen in a lot of very fragile societies right now. We work as an agency along with our partners uh, to help many of those governments and many of our security service partners to resist that. We work with the French and with other countries, other allies in that effort as well. Um, but we take very seriously the threat posed by Wagner and do everything we can to counter it and disrupt it. Great, thank you, Director. Um, Director Haynes, um, as you know, earlier I shared with you a report by the Converging Risk Lab um, called The Security Threat That Binds Us, which outlined, among other things, the need to elevate ecological security in U.S. national security policymaking. And one example they really go into a great deal of detail about is China's aggressive fishing activities and how those have contributed to overfishing more than any other nation. Um, this has led to increasingly hostile fishing disputes between China and, the, and its neighbors, as well as along the coast of Africa and Latin America, threatening economic food security and sovereignty. Um, in the view of the report's authors, the IC needs, to greater, needs greater capacity to analyze the negative effects of illegal fishing activities, as well as a whole host of other causes of ecological disruption and it needs to elevate the relative importance of ecological security issues within the IC prioritization framework. Um, have you had a chance to look at that? And can you commit to work with me to try to implement some of the um, recommendations included in that report? Yeah, absolutely, Senator. No, I, I did see the report, um, and I thought it was actually excellent. We've given it to our National Intelligence Manager for Climate and Global Issues, who is focused on these issues. I think one of the things that it does say very much in line with what you just indicated is it's not just about collecting more analysts. It's about prioritizing it. It's about ensuring we have access to the outside folks. And I think that is something that we are trying to do. In other words, get expertise both from the federal science community and work with them, but also with academic uh, communities and also with partners who have access to academic and other um, resources on these issues. And I absolutely commit to working with you further on this question. And I share your concern about unregulated, unlawful um, fishing that the Chinese have been doing in a variety of areas where we've seen them strip resources Absolutely. from yeah, variety of um, countries. Thank you, Director. General Nakasone, I want to ask you one last quick question before my time is out. And, um, and it involves supply uh, chains, which we are hearing a lot more about now for appropriate reasons. Uh, the 2021 National Intelligence Estimate on Climate Change states that China is the world's leading supplier of advanced grid components for ultra high voltage systems, things like transformers, circuit breakers, inverters, which we assess creates cyber vulnerability risks. Can you talk a little bit about your concerns about those vulnerabilities to our electric grid and what it means to currently be dependent on China for um, components for things like large power transformers? Senator, you highlight the, the challenge of supply chains, and, and we know supply chains well, even from you know, a different adversary with solar winds. 
what have we learned? Uh, I would tell you, first of all, is that as we, you know, uh, are reliant on more and more nations uh, to provide this type of capability, we have to have a vigilance in terms of how we look at this, whether or not we're understanding the complete supply chain of the critical pieces that come into it, or whether or not we have censoring on the other end that tells us something is anomalous, something is unique, something that has changed. Uh, this, is, this is the world in which we live. This is the world in which we have to operate for the future. Would it be a good idea to try to produce some of those critical components here or with trusted allies and friends instead of being so dependent? Certainly, and I, I think the work uh, of uh, many of you on this committee with regards to semiconductors is one great example of the importance of, uh, of fabrication within the United States. Thank you. Thank you, General. Senator Cotton. 